This video will provide an update on results from 2016 and a look ahead for 2017 presented by me and our key senior management staff, Ken Ross and Drew Egan. So 2016 was a very strong year for Michigan's credit unions. Our state turned in strong membership growth, loan growth, and earnings growth. And in fact, the 3.6% membership growth for last year was the strongest membership growth that we've seen since 1987. And, and more notably, that happened with a backdrop of Michigan's plateauing population growth. For many years, we actually had reductions in uh, population. It, it, it has since plateaued and has been inching up a little bit, while at the same time, credit unions continue to grow their membership at a very, uh, very rapid pace. Also last year, total loans were up 11.5% for credit unions. And when you break it down by category, new car loans grew by 17.5%. First mortgage loans grew 9.3%, and member business loans grew by a whopping 21.9%. So this was the most robust full year loan growth seen category by category and in aggregate that credit unions have seen in more than two decades. So congratulations to our Michigan credit unions for the strength and uh, progress with growth in your communities and in serving your members. The growth in membership demonstrates that Michigan has a serious need for credit unions, obviously. When people discover a credit union, when they increase their engagement with credit unions, they benefit tremendously. And the increase in the loan activity shows that our members are increasingly seeing credit unions as uh, the go-to destination to finance their big purchases and to help them with all the different life decisions that they make. Our continued commitment to the CUNA League system is also producing results. And it's now as important as ever to keep pushing forward with the message that we need strength in unity with credit unions supporting both their state association, the Michigan Credit Union League, and the Credit Union National Association. Now, regarding league activities, in 2016, we continue to make progress in our effort to reduce our membership dues. As a bit of perspective, going back to the year 2000, our league collected $3.1 million in membership dues. Last year, we collected just 550000 So quite a reduction, and the success of our business model is largely due to our two-thirds ownership of CU Solutions Group, our for-profit subsidiary. CUSG's success, as we'll de detail later in this report, allows us to continue to deliver a high level of support with an array of services to credit unions while operating with some of the lowest membership dues in the country at MCUL. As a result, last year we eliminated dues rebates in exchange for a permanent dues reduction for those credit unions that participate in the C-Link cooperative advertising campaign at least at a minimum level. And I'm pleased to report that we now have for the second uh, consecutive year 100 percent affiliation uh, with the Michigan Credit Union League. So kudos to our credit union community for their collaborative spirit and for their support of the MCUL. For our important partner, the Credit Union National Association, 96% of our 248 Michigan credit unions also belong and are affiliated with CUNA. Now our members' net and unrestricted assets, those net assets that belong to our member credit unions, also continue to rise. When you look at the financial statements for MCUL and affiliates, member net assets grew from $88.6 million in 2015, at the end of 2015, to 94.3 million at the end of 2016, a $5.7 million increase. Those net assets uh, were only at $16.9 million back in the year 2000. So that very large increase, 458% to be exact, over 16 years, really strengthens the league, allows us to generate support for the association from the returns on our investments as opposed to charging membership fees at a higher level. Most of the league's asset growth has come since 2010 when member net assets and unrestricted assets were 50.3 million. So in short, our financials remain on a strong and positive growth path. So before turning this over to Ken Ross for more details on the association side, I would sincerely like to thank our dedicated team members and our board of directors uh, for their support and their direction and helping us move MCWell and CUSG forward. 
CU Solutions Group is also a company that is continually seeking new and innovative ways to serve member credit unions in a way that is good for the credit union but also profitable for the company and by extension allowing us to have earnings that help us with this business model that keeps our member dues at an extremely low level. This enables our credit unions to be more effective in, in their activities with their members and uh, the efforts resonate through the entire credit union industry as MCUL is able to op operate more efficiently and make contributions to important causes within the state of Michigan as well as nationally. So I'll be back in a bit to share some exciting developments from across the organization, but for now I'd like to turn it over to our MCUL president and COO, Ken Ross. Thanks, Dave. We've kicked off 2017 with the surge of grassroots advocacy events throughout Michigan, focused on key members of the state legislature and our entire congressional delegation. The UP chapter of Credit Unions recently hosted a breakfast where several state lawmakers attended and heard the complete rundown of our 2017 legislative priorities. The Oakland chapter of Credit Unions also had Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence at their annual chapter meeting as a guest speaker. Now our team, as well as credit union leaders, have had the opportunity to meet with Congressman Dan Kildee and Dave Trott, both members of the House Financial Services Committee. These local events allow the League and our members the chance to promote legislative priorities with key lawmakers. All these individual meetings in Michigan were in addition to those we held in Washington, D.C. during the CUNA GAC, where we had 137 credit union advocates joining 5,000 more from around the nation to make our voices heard on Capitol Hill. Now the MCUL GAC also provides Michigan credit unions a platform to educate their lawmakers on important issues like data breaches and how they're impacting their institution. This issue will be a hot topic for discussion this year as MCUL supported data breach legislation is currently being drafted by Senate Banking Chairman Darwin Boer. This legislation will be introduced because MCUL decided it was time for Michigan to focus on finding state solutions to the data breach issue after years of congressional inaction. Now credit unions have been hammered by Home Depot, Target, Wendy's, and now Arby's, and we're hearing loud and clear that enough is enough. We're also focused on a number of other issues such as tow truck lien holder notification and electronic notarization. In the coming months, MCUL will be watching the payday lenders very closely as they once again try to get legislation introduced and passed to allow for bigger loans over a longer term with triple digit interest rates. Now at the federal level in Congress, health care reform is still in the mix as is tax reform and pulling together an infrastructure package is also on the horizon. We've received several statements from our members of our congressional delegation supporting our not-for-profit status. And as you know, the ultimate shape of any regulatory relief is being debated currently in the U.S. House Financial Services Committee. While the exact contents of the legislation is still unclear, MCUL and CUNA are focused on providing credit unions with relief from CFPB oversight and rulemaking through the Campaign for Common Sense Regulation. We're also strongly backing legislation that would allow loans made on one to four non-owner occupied residential units to be classified as residential loans. This would allow credit unions to treat these loans in the same way that banks do and take these loans out from under the credit union's member business lending cap. Now as the League focuses on these priorities in the second quarter of 2017, we'll be asking credit unions to help us communicate these issues with every member of Congress. I hope you'll consider joining us in September for the hike the hill as we carry these issues to Washington, D.C. Now, shifting to regulatory affairs. Over the past two quarters, MCUL, together with DIFFS and the NCUA, have hosted four regulator roundtables across the state of Michigan. These meetings provide credit unions attendees with the opportunity to ask questions to the regulators in an informal setting. DIFFS and the UNCUA also provide updates on what they're looking for and seeing from credit unions from every corner of the state of Michigan and what their exam focus will be over the next 12 to 18 months. Attendees have been very pleased with these meetings and appreciate the opportunity to ask questions freely. 
Our regulatory affairs staff continue to work with CUSG on revisions to destination compliance. The total compliance solution incorporating League Info Site, CU Policy Pro, Comply Site, CUNA's Compliance Resources, and Compliance Consulting. A work group has been meeting with a number of credit unions to obtain their feedback on what they would like to see in an all-in-one compliance resource. Now, a number of these enhancements are being made based on the focus group input, including a robust search feature and the creation of a forum for Michigan credit unions to ask questions and share information resources. Site layout enhancements are also in the works based on credit union feedback. Now looking ahead, following a successful update to the Michigan Credit Union Act, we're working on a modernization of the credit union bylaws for state chartered credit unions. Our next step will be to meet with DIFFs to discuss proposed amendments to the bylaws, including removing duplication between the bylaws and the Michigan Credit Union Act, as well as other areas of key importance identified by the committee. Now as you know, the Michigan Credit Union Foundation's fundraising efforts have been successful so far this year but the foundation is still looking for more credit union and chapter support to help fund community reinvestment and financial education grants and activities. These include financial reality fairs and individual grants that help people, families, and communities feel the credit union difference. So far, about 44% of Michigan credit unions and six chapters have made donations and we've raised just over $91,000 in 2017. Now the goal is to raise and distribute $150,000 this year to help credit unions. Now back to you, Dave. Thank you, Ken, for that update uh, on our association activities. Now I'd like to segue to the CUSG side. So CU Solutions Group exists to help credit unions serve, grow, and remain strong. That's our mission statement, and it's so that we can have an impact on people's lives with our credit union community. This mission grows more and more important over time, and now with fewer than 6,000 credit unions nationally and 248 in Michigan, 2016 witnessed a continued trend in that consolidation. And though troubling on the surface, and certainly we never like to see any credit union uh, go out of business, uh, whether it's merging voluntarily or because of financial stress. The fact is that fewer credit unions doesn't necessarily tell the entire story, right? Because our membership and our savings and our deposit growth and our, our reach in serving the public is growing and expanding, but with fewer credit unions. Approaching 110 million credit union members Membership rose by more than 4% nationwide, and as I mentioned earlier, 3.6% in the state of Michigan, where our population growth is nowhere near what it is for the rest of the country. Total credit union assets rose by more than 7%, total loans by more than 10% nationally, and assets per credit union by more than 11%. I reported on the Michigan metrics earlier. Looking at these facts all together, it's more accurate to say that as credit unions continue to consolidate and become more effective at serving their members' needs and their community's needs, we're realizing that credit unions and the credit union value proposition is stronger than ever. The real driver behind this favorable uh, situation is our increased ability to refine our messaging and deliver the cutting edge technologies and the value proposition to consumers. It's yet another reason that we continue to move forward in lockstep with CUNA so that credit unions, not only in Michigan, but nationally, can continue to gain awareness, uh, gain favor with consumers, and gain uh, wallet share in the services they provide. By offering solutions, CUSG that is, by offering solutions in the areas of technology, marketing, and HR performance, the company is committed to growing the knowledge and resources that are a driving positive uh, influencer for credit unions as they uh, seek to serve their members. To that end, last year, 2016, was another successful year for CUSG. The company closed with a net income of $8.6 million, well ahead of plan, and up 6.4 percent, total assets closed at $85.5 million, and shareholder equity increased by 13 percent to $62.6 million. And for the sixth consecutive year, the board, the CUSG board, declared a $3.5 million shareholder dividend. Many, the majority of CUSG's owners, are Michigan-based credit unions. So these financial results and the corresponding financial benefit for Michigan's credit unions 
really matters. In short, the balance sheet for CUSG is stronger than the prior year, it's stronger than it's ever been, and CUSG is very well positioned for the future. So as Drew Egan, our COO, CFO of CUSG will discuss in a moment, uh, we're reaffirming our commitment to the growth and reinvention of all of our core offerings through CUSG. That's the path we're on in 2017. And as we continue down that road, we'll do so with a commitment to the why that drives and motivates our actions. Just as it was before, that purpose is to grow and strengthen credit unions for the financial betterment of their members' lives. So with that, I'd like to once again thank our dedicated and talented board of directors and our staff for their engagement and their support as we position to move the company forward. We have great talent within our organization and on our board of directors and a solid vision for the year ahead. I'd now like to turn it over to Drew Egan, our uh, COO and CFO, for an in-depth look at CU Solutions Group. Thanks, Dave. We've all witnessed changes to the financial services industry brought on by technology. These changes tend to happen in small incremental shifts, but at some point, when we stop to look back, these small shifts have completely changed the landscape of our industry. This is why CU Solutions Group has been focused on reinvention the past several years, so that our technology, marketing, and performance solutions are not only capable of keeping credit unions relevant, but to make sure that they've, they are capable of helping credit unions become preferred financial institutions of our members. With that in mind, we have some exciting new developments to share. As many of you already know, COSG acquired a majority share of CO Wallet during the first quarter of 2017. We've been working with the Los Angeles-based tech team, and together we've created a new company with a new strategic vision, LifeStep Solutions, led by our product development and technology solutions teams. We're in the process of designing the LifeSteps Wallet mobile application. The app is designed to enhance your credit union's mobile offerings while matching your products and other relevant solutions with major life events happening in your members' lives. The first release and development focuses on shopping, home and auto, and consumer protection resources. It will include functions like mobile payments, card-linked offers, exclusive discounts on products and services, merchant locators, and other useful tools. This app will also aggregate a whole host of functionality already popular with consumers. When branded for your credit union, the app is designed to keep you top of wallet and top of mind. Dave Adams will be sharing specifics during a major launch at this year's AC&E in Grand Rapids. But in the meantime, you can visit LifeStepSolutions.com for more details. Our Marketing Solutions Division also made progress this past quarter with its digital advertising capabilities. The Focus IQ marketing team has developed a sound formula that combines strategy development, media purchasing, online advertising, and social media. They've been working with credit unions across the country and have had a great deal of success engaging consumers. This quarter, the Love My Credit Union Rewards team launched its new and improved Sprint Credit Union Member Cash Rewards program. Through March, more than 75,000 lines were added to the program, and it's plain to see why. Members receive $100 cash rewards for every new line activated through Sprint as well as $50 annual loyalty rewards every year for every line. Credit union reception has also been positive because of the new sales and activation tracking and a wholly simplified process. During the first quarter, our Performance Solutions Division placed a great deal of emphasis on creating new resources for credit unions. Developing HR content Centered on compensation and performance management, the team has been developing a library of quick and easy to absorb videos, articles, and tutorials. If your credit union's HR team would benefit from new insights and employee engagement, benefits, pay, or human resources in general, connect with HR Performance Solutions on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. The division is sharing new content on a regular basis. 
Finally, as always, our Michigan Solutions team has been hard at work on the road engaging credit unions across the state. In addition to leading discussions at February's Compliance Conference and March's Lending and Marketing Conference, the team toured Michigan with their always popular Lunch and Learn sessions. The first quarter Lunch and Learns focused on lending and featured COSG partners Spirion, Meridian Link, and Auto Financial Group. While all our lending partners were well received, Spirion's Gold Star Lender generated a great deal of interest with our credit unions. Gold Star Lender is a collateral management system that uses GPS technology to protect your credit union's asset. It allows you to expand your portfolio by lending to members with less than ideal credit. It mitigates risk and provides consumers with an alternative to predatory lenders all in one device. Again, our goal is to help credit unions serve, grow, and remain strong so that you can make an impact on people's lives. As we move through the year, we'll continue to collaborate with our clients to ensure that we're providing the right solutions to meet your needs. If you have questions or suggestions on how we can better meet your needs, feel free to contact me or any member of our leadership team. Thanks again for joining us. Well, I hope you found this brief summary of 2016 and our look ahead to be useful and valuable. It's part of our continued effort to be transparent with our member credit unions and in the case of CUSG, our shareholders, regarding our priorities and our focus. We have very dedicated teams at both MCL and CUSG working on your behalf. Working in close collaboration with CUNA and our other partners, we have plenty of reason for optimism as we look to the future. We remain committed to removing barriers, promoting the credit indifference, providing so solutions for service excellence, and providing a total compliance solution for our member credit unions through destination compliance. And on the CUSG side, we're looking to excel in the delivery of technology, marketing, and HR performance solutions for member credit unions. So I want to again thank all of you for your support of MCL and CUSG. We're here to serve you, so if you have questions or feedback, we welcome that. And again, thank you for listening.